We'll start this meeting at uh, 6.02 p.m. First, we're going to have roll call. J.J. Pena present. Oscar Salinas present. Ms. Pietro present. Joel Garcia present. And John is here. Dr. Bedu declare a quorum. Thank you. Um, will everyone please stand for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Doug. Uh, next, we have tax collector's report, item number one, May 2016 tax collector report. I need a motion. I'll swivel. Second. Uh, motion made a second. Any questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. Next item under approval of minutes. Also, move on items one, two, three, four, and five for June 8th, May 18th, May 25th, May 31st, and June 7th. And I second that with the correction on the individuals that are present as I was reading through the um, minutes of the regular call meeting and work session. If all of my colleagues will at least look to page four, you'll see that all regular call meetings um, have Mr. Avendano present. And so, um, as much as we would want him here, he's not. Okay, I have a motion made a second. Any questions? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, me. Under superintendent's report, we don't have any items at this time. Discussion items, item number one, discussion of investment, investment, investment earnings as of May 31st, 2016. Good evening. Mr. Board President, members of the board, Dr. Benavides, uh, we come to you with the investment and investment earnings report as of May 31st, 2016. I'd like to direct you to page 48. On page 48, we have our, our bank balances as of May 31st, 2016. In the general fund, we had $111.4 million. In the general fund reserve, we had $10 million. In the debt service fund, we had $10, $10 million. In the workers' comp fund, we had $9.5 million. In the unemployment fund, we had $2.2 million. In the health insurance fund, we had $5.8 million. In the food service fund, we had $2.6 million. In the merit scholarship fund, we had $152,000. In the tax collection fund, we had $855,000. In the print shop, we had $10,000. And the golf course, we had $44,000. We had total investment uh, summary as of May 31st, 2016, a total of $152.8 million. Any questions on our cash on hand as of May 31st? If not, I'd like to direct you to page 59, where we have our investment earnings. And this investment earnings are from September 1st, 2015 through May 31st, 2016. The general fund had an interest income of $409,000. The debt service fund, 11,000. Workers comp fund, 30,000. Unemployment fund, 8,500. Health insurance fund, 9,800. Food service fund, 6,400. Merit scholarship, $145. Print shop, $12. And the golf course, 176. Year to date, from September 1st through May 31st, we had $477,000 worth of uh, investment income. Any questions on our bank balances as of May 31st, 2016, or our investment earnings as of uh, from September 1st through May 31st? If not, Mr. Board President, members of the board, that concludes the report for the investment report. Thank you, Mr. Rana. 
Next item, item number 200 discussion items. We have presentation on Power Hour at La Jolla High School. And we have Mr. Antonio Cano, principal at uh, La Jolla High School, who wants to share a strategy that they will be trying uh, this year at La Jolla High School. This coming year, I'm sorry. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Board President, Dr. Malavides, Board of Trustees and members that are present here today. First of all, let me apologize. I just caught an error on the cover page on your copy. It says 2016 to 2107. I don't intend on doing it for the next 100 years, but maybe I will. <laughs> but on the PowerPoint, it is correct that 2016, 2017. Uh, a just a photo. brief uh, history of, of what Power Hour is about or why I decided to implement this for La Jolla High School. Last summer, as I attended the TASPE conference in Austin, Texas, uh, I attended a conference that caught my attention or a session that caught my attention about a school here in, in Texas that was doing power hour. So I was curious to see what this was about. And what it is, is that they have a one hour lunch period at, at their high school. They don't have three or four lunches like regular high schools have. They only have one hour for lunch. And during this one hour, students have their lunch. They can go to tutorials, they can go to clubs, organizations, they can have a open gym a participation in the gym. They can go to the library. They can just relax. It's a, it's a one hour free time that these students have the responsibility and the autonomy to choose whatever activities that they want to choose. But before we embarked on doing something like this, I had to meet with my staff. I had to meet with my administrators. I had to meet with my student body just to let them know that we had the confidence in them that we could handle power hour at La Jolla High School. Currently, we, we house about 2,100 students, physically, physical bodies at La Jolla High School. So, you know, just by the sheer number, people might say, you know, are you sure, are you serious, you know, are you crazy? But, but the fact of the matter is that I believe in my students. I, I believe in my students. I've always believed in them. I think they're great kids. I believe in my staff. So I knew with proper planning that we could have the power hour. So if you follow along the, the PowerPoint, why power hour? Well, first of all, it's going to empower students to have control over part of the day. It's an opportunity that we can bend time. A lot of our kids would love to participate in clubs, in enrichment opportunities, and so forth. But due to the fact that 90 to 95% of our students are bused, they need to get home. They need to help with the family chores, with their families, you know, businesses, et cetera. So even though they would want to, unfortunately they can't. This will allow them during the school day, they are, are not missing instruction. During the school day, during this one hour, they can have their lunch and they can go join clubs, they can go to tutorials, they can go to enrichment opportunities, they can go to the computer labs, rehearsals at fine arts, et cetera. It's open for them to do whatever it is that they want to do. It provides students the autonomy, the freedom to increase their achievement and develop personal skills, okay? Right now, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, we do have students who make ill-advised choices and, and, and they do take two or three lunches. I mean, it's always happened. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. It happens at La Jolla High School. I don't know about the other high schools. I'm not here to speak for them, but at La Jolla High School, it does happen, and it's happened for years. I mean, even when we were in high school, we've known of people that, you know, skip lunches, you know, take two or three lunches. So students were missing out on class time. They were missing out on intervention time because they were making an ill-advised choice to stay with their friends for a second lunch or, or even a third lunch. So this is going to eliminate all those multiple lunches because we are only gonna have one lunch there's no chance for them to quote unquote skip because there's nothing to skip. They're, they don't have a scheduled class. So with this in mind, we should increase our achievement in end of course, in their six weeks classes, in their, in their block classes, et cetera. Course failure rate will drop as a result of increased tutorial opportunities. Now, just to clarify, this is not just for tutoring. It's also for those AP, AP students that have a million and one things to do after school. They're in band, they're in athletics, they're in UIL. They would love to have opportunities to go to enrichment for their AP class, but they can't because they're in so many activities. They can go during their power hour and still get that help that they need for AP as well. So it's not only for 
uh, failure or, or for re remedial classes, but it's also for advanced classes as well. Due to the elimination of the multiple lunch periods, attendance rate will increase. Student extracurricular participation will also increase in clubs, organizations. This will en uh, enhance students' personal skills. They're gonna feel like they belong to something now where in the past they may not have felt that they belong to any clubs because they just cannot stay after school to be in a club. And it is an opportunity. It's not a program. This is not a program where the light switch turns on and off. It, it is an opportunity that we are granting our students at La Jolla High School. The benefits of Power Hour, this is just a few of the many benefits, but the main ones are, of course, teachers will provide the tutorials and or enhancement enrichment opportunities for students that would normally wouldn't stay due to transportation issues. Administrators do only a one hour lunch duty as opposed to two. Therefore, we spend more time in the classrooms as well from having to do two hours of lunch duty on a daily basis. Uh, teachers and students get re-energized. They have a, a break in, in the middle of the day where it re-energizes them to finish off the day strong for the second half of the day. Students are allowed to eat anywhere. They have the autonomy to eat anywhere on campus except, of course, for the library, uh, the computer labs because of all of the computers that are there, fine arts and vocational areas, but they're open to eat outside, under the trees, at the picnic tables that are under the, the canopy, uh, in the Coyote Cafe, in the cafeteria, by the benches, by the library, anywhere. They have the autonomy, they have the freedom and the responsibility to eat anywhere on campus. They can even eat in the classroom with their teachers if they want to go for the clubs, they can take their lunch plate with them and eat in the classroom. Uh, and it provides a college-going culture. They need to understand that this is what college looks like. They can eat outside, they can take their plate, eat at a park bench, at a picnic table that's outside. They don't have to eat inside a cafeteria. And uh, of course, this empowers all of our students to act with great responsibility. Uh, in order to handle this, during the spring, uh, I'm a man of science. I mean, I taught science for six years before I became an administrator. So I always like to test everything, you know, with everything. You have to experiment to see if it's going to work. So in order for us to know whether it was going to work, if we could handle the mass numbers to feed and to house and to be able to have enough uh, uh, spaces, you know, seating areas, we did increase our serving lines from three to four lines. We added approximately 35 cafeteria tables that uh, added about an additional 400 students of uh, seating capacity. And then we also had our construction class build 10 uh, picnic tables that are housed, uh, that are outside of, of the canopy area. So no student will not eat because they didn't have time or because they didn't have a place to sit. If they do not eat, it's because they chose not to eat, not because they did not have time or, or, uh, or seating area. We tried it out for, for uh, three weeks, and I'm very happy to say that we had no problems with it. Uh, we had no fights, we had no food fights. Kids loved it, staff loved it, because staff will do duty for half of the time, and then they'll take their personal lunch during the other half. Teachers that are gonna be doing tutorials, clubs, et cetera, they're gonna be exempt from doing duty because that's gonna be their duty, having kids in their classrooms. Uh, so, so all in all, it's a win-win, as most of my teachers mentioned at our staff meeting. It's a win-win for everyone, for the teachers as well as for the students. These are just a few of the pictures that we did during the trial one. The first one to the left, the top, that is me addressing the student body because before I wanted to try something like this, I had to address them. I had to make them feel that I believed in them, that we believed in them as a campus, that we knew that they could handle the responsibility of having over 2,000 kids out at the same time. Uh, the middle picture and, and the rest of the pictures are some of the things that students were doing. Uh, the middle one on the top, it's the cafeteria. It looks full, but it was great. The next one is in the Coyote Cafe, the one to your left at the bottom. That's outside in the picnic area and the picnic tables. The, the open gym concept, one students ate, they would get a stamp on their hand and that was their ticket to go into the gym. They couldn't go straight to the gym and avoid getting the, uh, a lunch plate. We had to account for all the lunches, so they would go through the lunch lines and every administrator was at a lunch line stamping kids on the hand with a, with a date stamp. That was their ticket to go into the gym or to even go into the library. This other picture shows students at the library. They're either reading, they're playing games, they're playing chess, they're just relaxing, they're on the computer, etc. So, uh, 
Uh, I want to thank uh, Dr. Mendez, of course, for her support, the, the Board of Trustees, uh, Dr. Sciences Department, Mr. Vela's department, Mr. Perez is here. I know he, he hustled to get me tables, to give me trash cans, uh, you know, Chief Gonzalez for his advice, Coach Garza for the equipment that he allowed us to have. Uh, we are gonna be installing basketball poles outside in the courtyard so the kids can also have time to play in the morning and also during power hour basketball outside in the canopy area. So those are made, I just need maintenance to go and dig them and install them. Uh, any questions, any comments? Uh, I'm just gonna share with you that my, my son attends La, La Jolla High School and, yes, sir. and I remember he, he went to the house and he said, hey dad, we're doing something real cool, the power hour for lunch and stuff. And I said, well, I mean, just the name, it sounds good, power hour. So I was thinking like something else, but he said, no, it's just the time that we, we get mm -hmm. to spend. And, and I asked him, you know, did it work for you? Is it working for you? He said, well, yeah, because sometimes we'll either go to the restroom and I'm not supposed to say it, but we'll be texting and stuff like that. or." We'll get to talk and we'll get mm -hmm. to mingle. We'll get to we'll, we'll get everything that we have to talk with our friends out. Right. And he said, and at the same time, it feels you don't go back mm -hmm. into the classroom yeah. kind of feeling sleepy mm -hmm. because you just mm -hmm. ate right. or kind of mm -hmm. tired. You know? So it really helped him with uh, getting his energy and and getting to all the man and the talking that the kids do, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. throughout that hour. So it worked for them, but I mean, hopefully it can yes, work again for La Jolla and for the for the other high schools as well. Yes, and I want to say that that the first day we did it in April. Uh, we did it for three days in April, and then after end of course in May, we did it for the rest of the year. And on the very first day, I remember kids rushing to the cafeteria, reserving sections of tables for all their group and their cliques and all that, because it was the first time that they could actually have all their friends together at one time, because the good students will never skip. So they are, are not gonna risk skipping the lunch to go see their friends. So this gave them the opportunity to have their friends there to eat with them, to socialize. So it was a win-win for, for everyone, for our staff, for our students, for our admins, and we can only get better with this. Well, and I wanna commend you, Mr. Cano, because a lot of times our staff go out to trainings and we never hear you know, what's going to be their next steps. And so for you to come back and implement something that you attended in a session, mm -hmm. commend, I'm, you are to be commended. Thank you, Thank you, Mr. Connell. Any other questions? Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, at this time we have, uh, there's no public comments, Doc? No. No public comments, and we have consent agenda. Also move. Uh, just uh, one, okay, item, yeah, one item to be pulled out. Yes. Which item was it, SP? Under instruction and student services, number five, the district calendar revision. Okay, also okay. move again with the pulling of that item, number five under D, instructions and student service. Need a second? Second. I have a motion by a second, any questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. <laughs> Next item under contracts, item number four, renewal, renewal of self-funded employee insurance benefit plans. Also move. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Any also move. I second that. Have a motion, may I second any questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. Item number five, 403B third party administrator contract renewal for 2016 17. So move. What item was that? Second. Number, number five. five 403B. Have a second. Any questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. Item number six under business and finance, nomination to the Texas Association of School Boards Region 1, Position B, Board of Director. Mr. President, I'd like to uh, make a nomination to nominate and appoint to the Texas Association of School Boards Region 1, Position B as Board of Director, one of our own, Esperanza SP Ochoa. I'll second it. I have a motion made and second, any questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Stay. Motion passes. Thank you. Congratulations, Mr. Chaw. Thank you for the nomination. I still have to be elected. Okay. Thank you. Next item under instruction and student services, item number five, 2016 17 district calendar revision. Also move. A motion and a second? Second. Have a motion by a second. Any questions? 
That's the item you pulled out, Mr. For the district calendar? Yes. Okay, do you have a, a, a question, Dr. Sainz? Hold on, let me get organized here. So I'm noticing at the end of the year we have two in-service days? Yes. Can you tell me a little bit of what's going to take place during those two in-service days? Because I'm just thinking of our staff members uh, being drained, brain drained. Well, one of the things that principals always talk about, and um, we haven't had a formal session pl uh, pl to plan with the principals, but one of the things that principals always talk about that they need is more time to uh, make plans and set goals for the next year. So they could use some of that time for that. For campus improvement plan? Camp, for the campus improvement plan, goal setting. Uh, just look at some of the data. For example, this year we even had our TPRI Tejasle data and we did not have enough time with teachers. And so there's always a need for looking at data and setting goals for the next year. And that's something that the principals could use that. And you need both days for that? I'm just thinking too, because this week I've been with the T-test training and there's so much and the last thing I want our district is to rush through that training for our employees and right. you know, like having said, one of those yeah. days used at the beginning of the year or midpoint in fall. Some we have not had a formal planning session with the principals but I'm sure that we will and we'll use those two days to the best uh, for, the, for the teachers. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. Item number one under human resources, we have 2014-15 teacher training reimbursements. That's a Second. I have a motion by a second. Any questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. Item number two, public hearing and approval of safe of salary adjustments regarding payment in excess of contractual amount. I guess I'll open up this public hearing at 625. PM? Doc, this, this is the techs that work the extra days or what? Yes, they're going to work during the testing, uh, during the July 11th uh, for the online star testing through the 15th. And because they're going to get a little more than what they make because they have to work extra, we have to have conduct a public hearing and approve the amount. Okay, also move after we get out of the public hearing for approval. Are there any other questions? This public hearing is now closed at 6.25 p.m. And I did the sole move on that item. No second. I have a motion made a second. Any questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. Item number three, reclassification of two CNS FTEs. Which is a little stuff. The clerical? This one is going to be uh, to make a clerical a professional position and to make a professional a clerical position. But with the accounts payable, we'd like for that to be a professional person. Was this uh, what was recommended to us from Mr. Yes, this is part of that. Okay. What was his name from the state? Onra. Onra, from the Onra. audit. Okay, yes. also move. Second. I have a motion made a second, any questions? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, motion passes. Item number four, reclassification of current FTEs, language arts coordinator to elementary executive position. That's dividing the elementaries, right? Doug, I know we spoke today. Correct. Also move. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? The motion passes. At this time, we'll be going to executive session under Texas Government Code 551071, 072, and 074 at 626 p.m. We're back from executive session at 8.06 p.m. Uh, Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion under letter H personnel. Items 1, 2, skipping 3, going to 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 as discussed in executive session. Second. I have a motion made a second. Any questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes. Mr. President, members of the board, with respect to all staff resignations, I recommend a motion to rescind the resignation of, of Adriana Mata and accept the remaining resignations as discussed in executive session. I'll go so move on the recommendations by legal counsel. Second. I have a motion made to second. Any questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. This meeting is now adjourned at 8.07 p.m.